Following our last talk, differentiating liver enzymes versus liver function testing, let's dive into liver enzymes with a bit more detail. So the objectives of today's talk will be to first differentiate different patterns of liver enzyme elevation because this helps shape our differential diagnosis. And secondly, we'll focus a little bit more on the hepatocellular pattern of liver enzyme elevation and look into that with a bit more detail. There are two general patterns of liver enzyme elevation, hepatocellular and cholestatic. In a hepatocellular pattern, ALT and AST elevation is predominant, and this is because both ALT and AST are highly concentrated in hepatocytes, and injury causes direct release into the bloodstream. In contrast, ALP elevation is predominant in a cholestatic pattern. ALP is particularly concentrated in the liver, the bile duct, and bone tissues. Once we rule out extra hepatic etiologies of ALP elevation, we know that ALP is often raised in liver pathology due to increased synthesis in response to cholestasis. As a result, ALP is an indirect marker of cholestasis. Understanding the different patterns of elevation help us generate a differential diagnosis. For hepatocellular elevation patterns, common etiologies include viral, drugs, autoimmune, space-occupying masses, and ischemia. When we look at a cholestatic pattern, more commonly we see drugs as an etiology, biliary pathology including stones, obstructing masses, or stasis, and finally other specific conditions such as primary sclerosing cholangitis or primary biliary cholangitis. Because the hepatocellular pattern is typically more common, we'll look into that with a bit more detail. We like to first differentiate whether the elevation is mild to moderate, which is usually in the order of hundreds, or severe, which is usually in the order of 1,000 or above. With a mild to moderate elevation, we first want to review a history of prescription drugs, non-prescription drugs, and toxins as an etiology, and this commonly includes alcohol. Next, we should consider hepatitis. And typically, for a mild to moderate elevation, we're looking at hep C, EBV, or CMV. Other etiologies can include hemochromatosis, autoimmune diseases, especially in females, and celiac disease. More rare etiologies, such as Wilson's disease or alpha-1 antitrypsin, can also be considered, but usually after we screen for the previously mentioned etiologies. Finally, fatty liver disease is quite common, but is a diagnosis of exclusion. We can add a metabolic workup that might increase our pretest probability, and an ultrasound might show fatty liver infiltration, but the gold standard test would actually be a liver biopsy. When we think about extreme hepatocellular patterns of elevation, we are talking about an ALT or AST of greater than 1000, and for that there's quite a limited differential. We should think about acute hepatitis, specifically hepatitis A and hepatitis B. Autoimmune presentations may also present with extreme elevation ischemia or shock liver, acute thrombosis, specifically of the hepatic vein, which is called Bud Chiari syndrome, toxins, in particular Tylenol because it's a reversible cause, Wilson's disease, and pregnancy-related conditions. This can include HELP syndrome or acute fatty liver of pregnancy. To investigate, you could order IgM levels for hepatitis, ANA, anti-mitochondrial, and anti-smooth muscle for autoimmune etiologies, a lactate, or look for other evidence of end organ damage for shock liver, ultrasound, specifically with Dopplers, in order to assess the venous system, Tylenol level to assess whether there's any toxins, a ceruloplasmin for Wilson's disease, and start with a beta HCG for assessment of pregnancy. After today, I hope we're able to recognize different patterns of liver enzyme elevation and develop an approach to hepatocellular transaminitis.